Okay, welcome everybody. Um, I'm gonna walk you through this Bio One genetic problem that has to do with skin color, which is a polygenetic or a multifactorial inherited trait. So in your lab book, you have this particular situation where they are describing different uh, scenarios of dominant and recessive genes related to skin color. And the idea is that if you have more dominant traits um, of these two different genes, then you get darker skin. And as you go through, you get lighter skin. So if you have all recessive traits of this, you have light or white skin. And I'm going to point out several times that this is an oversimplification of reality and uh, I'll talk about that as we go on. First, I want to introduce you to a couple of people, uh, friends of mine. First of all, my good buddy, Stan Duffy from high school, who was one of those people that was just awesome at everything. He was on the football team and the basketball team, and we were on the track team together. And he was also awesome in um, English and calculus and physics. And he went on to become a staff development programmer in test which is a sophisticated version of a um, software engineer. And we happened to take this picture just recently um, because he was in town and we got to have dinner together and uh, talk about the old times and the new times, which is cool. And then my colleague, Dan Anderson in the physics department, he and I were two of the original um, founders or starters of the STEM Center uh, back in the day and good buddy of mine. Um, and then Xavier Lopez, my friend and colleague in my department, I was evaluating him one day and uh, I took this picture, uh, sort of a selfie with the two of us. I guess that's not quite a selfie, but anyway, there's my buddy, Xavier Lopez, friend and colleague. And then my sister, uh, Mindy Ravel. Uh, there are actually, I have two sisters, uh, Mindy and Misty Ravel, and I apologize, Misty, because uh, this is the picture I found first and I was in a, a, a crunch for time. So my sister, Mindy Ravel, my sisters uh, are adopted uh, from Korea. Um, they've been around my entire life pretty much, so I don't recognize them um, in any other way other than just being my sisters. But sometimes we have to explain it when people wonder why we don't look the same and that kind of thing. So anyway, there's my sister, Mindy Ravel, okay? Now, um, I said this and I'll say it again um, when I walk you through this a little bit more, that we're doing this problem where we're looking at skin color, which is thought to be one of the most phenotypically variable traits in the human species. And in this particular problem we're working out, we're looking at two different sets of genes that are involved. And as I said, this is a uh, oversimplification of the problem. There have been since then uh, many other genes that have been discovered and I'll go through that um, later on but there are all kinds of uh, people still working on the um, variations in say skin color. So I'll go into that again later on. So in this particular case, let's work through this problem and see how it might work out um, so we can use this Punnett square. So we have, in this case, we have two different genes um, and we have uh, one that is, we're, we're calling basically set A and there are two alleles and it could be dominant or it could be recessive. And remember the more dominant genes, um, it is thought that those characteristics then produce more of the pigment called melanin and that makes your skin darker. So a person that was homozygous dominant for all of these genes, AA, big A, big A, big B, big B, if that's her phenotype or if that's her genotype, then that person would have the darkest skin and a person that was recessive for all of them would have the lightest skin. Okay. Uh, and again, I'll we'll work this problem and I'll, and I'll talk about how that's an oversimplification of it. But um, we do that often in genetics 
in lower division classes because it allows us to sort of play with the numbers and see how things work out. It's still a good teaching model, I think, to learn how the system works. But you have to keep in mind that the reality of it isn't as simple as this. So what we're doing in this case, we're taking two individuals that are heterozygous for both traits. So they are big A, little a, and they are little, big B, little b, okay? Two people, and they have the same genotype. Remember, genotype is the genetic makeup, and then the phenotype is the um, physical or outward appearance. So essentially in this case, since they have two of the capital letters, they have a medium level of melanin produced. So their skin is sort of not super dark and not super light. It's somewhere in the middle. So we're going to cross those two. And once again, um, it doesn't matter really which one goes where, but let's put the sperm up there and then the eggs right there. And we've got to figure out, let's say this person is going to produce the sperm. We've got to figure out the combinations that could be made. So remember, these are two different genes. So when this individual goes through meiosis and makes sperm or eggs, they're going to put one copy of each chromosome into a sperm or egg. Can't put in two copies uh, because the idea is you're taking two haploid cells putting them together to get a diploid, diploid cell. So what kind of combinations could I get? Well, I could make a sperm where the big A went with the big B. So it could be like that. I'm just going to go ahead and put that over here. So big A, big B, that's one. Uh, the big A could go with the little B. And so that could go there. Um, then the little A could go with the big B and the little a could go with the little B. Okay. Just like that. That's my different possible scenarios of what I could produce. Okay. And these two individuals in this case, it's essentially a die hybrid cross like some of the other ones we've done before. Now, since the male and female in this case have the same genotype, that means the sperm and eggs they could produce, will be the same sort of combinations. So I can do the same thing over here. They, if this is the egg being produced, then I could make this combination. Okay. And then what I do again, just like we did before is we ask ourselves, okay, what if, and again, it doesn't really matter what you put where. So let's say this is the sperm and this is the egg. If this sperm fertilizes this egg, then you would get that. You would get big A, big A, big B, big B, and this then would have four copies and would have very dark black skin, okay? Now, if I go over here um, and, I, and if this sperm fertilized this egg, I would get big A, big A, big B, little b. So I get three, so it's a little bit lighter. And if I get this one right here, I've got big A, little a, big B, big B, just like that one, three capital letters. And if I go over here, I got big A, little a, big B, little b. I've got two copies. So, whoops, I messed up when I did this one here. So this one's two copies. Let's see if I can find my pointer there. Okay. So the medium darkness is what you see there. And these two, which have three, are like this one, light black in this case. So if I go down then over here, I've got little a, little a, little b, little b. This is no capital letters. All right. And that then is the white color or light color or lack of melanin, if you will. Okay. Now, same thing. You just, you go through this whole, uh, big Punnett square with 16 different spots and you just match them up. So, uh, let's say I want to come down here to this one and I have this sperm fertilizing this egg. 
what would I get? What I get? I'd get a big A and a little A, and a big B and a little B. Okay, so you work through that whole thing, matching up the sperm and the egg. That shows you the possible choices of what could be produced um, in that scenario. Now, as I mentioned, um, what we're looking at in this case uh, are two different genes that code for skin color. Um, I don't know exactly when, but but many, many years ago, it was thought that maybe there are three, and now uh, that continues to go on, and we're finding more and more that most human characteristics, most traits, are far more complex than what we originally thought or how we present them in teaching. So, for example, the International Federation of Pigment Cell Society has determined as of now, recently, there are 378 different genetic loci probably involved with skin color. So it's not just two genes, uh, it's many. And they interact in unknown uh, ways, um, in some cases, to give you the wide range of phenotypic skin color that we see in humans. And some of those genes we understand better than others, um, and some have probably more influence than others, but it's not as simple as there being just 16 different skin tones um, and two genes, okay? So it's probably more like 378, and, and again, that's always uh, changing. So it's a good teaching model to sort of learn how the Punnett square works. Uh, we do many things in general biology like this, but you do have to keep in mind that it isn't as simple as that. We're oversimplifying it uh, to help you kind of learn how the genetics might work. But keep in mind, it's far more complex than that. Okay. Hope everyone's having a good day and I will talk with you later.